you've been a longtime vocal opponent of Nord Stream 2, uh, which is a pipeline that lays beside Nord Stream 1. Nord Stream 1 is the one that's halted uh, for maintenance. And, and, and the premise is that you always thought that Russia could hold undue influence over Europe by weaponizing uh, nat gas, and that's exactly what has happened. Can we put that genie back in the bottle at this point? I doubt it, but um, we had the, the Russian empire, if you will, at a good place back uh, two or three years ago when we had stopped the Nord Stream 2. And uh, when, you, when you think about that Putin only has um, the energy sector to drive his economy, uh, then he's really beholden to being able to move that product out of uh, Russia and, generally speaking, into Europe. So uh, at that particular point in time, we had, uh, uh, I think we had a, a good break on his aggressive nature. And he's got a history of doing this. When you think back, uh, you know, cutting off the gas to Ukraine during one of their winter periods of time. And I will suggest to you, uh, I'll make a, a, a prophetic statement here. Uh, he will do that again this winter uh, with Europe, Germany, uh, and other countries that are going to be impacted by this. I mean, this is a really dangerous situation that we've allowed uh, Europe to get into. American LNG was being laid into Poland. Poland was being able to uh, send that out across the European Union. Uh, we had things in a great, I think, condition. Uh, American LNG was going to be able to uh, replace a lot of those older burning inefficient power plants in, in Europe. But as it is, they were shutting down these older plants, the nuclear plants, relying on renewables, and they're going to pay a massive price for uh, that popular uh, position of we've got to get over to the, uh, the renewable side, the green side of things in a massive way and do away with fossil fuels. Um, obviously, we've seen the price of oil spike higher uh, amidst this conflict, Mr. Secretary. And uh, there is going to be a meeting of G7 finance ministers today regarding a uh, uh, a price cap on oil, so effectively setting a cap on, on the price of oil at which Russia can secure uh, insurance and financing for shipping that oil out, so Russia would only be able to sell at a certain price or below. Do you think that could work? I mean, it seems like they would be able to well, find plenty of friends who would take the oil off their hands in other, in other ways. Yeah, government uh, trying to set the market has generally not been a, a good uh, uh, a good look, and I think that's what you'll find here, is that uh, this is a global market, and uh, the European uh, decision makers may float in there and, you know, try to send this powerful message of we're going to put a cap on this, and uh, Mr. Putin, you will do what we say. Uh, listen, uh, Putin is his own guy, that's for sure, and, and uh, he has no interest in Europe other than taking over uh, territory. Uh, he will use everything that he has. Uh, you know, God bless the Ukrainians for being able to push back the way they have against him. I think uh, uh, he was obviously very surprised at the strength of uh, the Ukrainian military. Hopefully they can keep that up, and at some point in time, uh, he will recognize that Europe is not uh, his playground where he can go and uh, take over anything he wants. And American LNG and American in, uh, energy can be a part of that as we bring Europe back to reality in that you've got to have a fossil fuel mix and a substantial fossil fuel mix to be able to keep your energy uh, industry going, which in turn will uh, keep your economy going.